in this video we will talk about the mode of respiration in case of bacteria that is in how many ways do they perform this process of respiration now we normally know that there are two main methods one is called aerobic respiration and the other is anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration is when oxygen is present and anaerobic respiration is when oxygen is absent in absence of oxygen if respiration takes place then it is known as anaerobic in case of aerobic respiration there are multiple steps the first step is glycolysis in glycolysis one glucose molecule is broken down into two pyruvic acid molecules after glycolysis there is krebs cycle and it is followed by electron transport chain and the last thing is oxidative phosphorylation this is the step where actually ATP synthesis takes place. Now we also know that there are certain regions or sites in the cell where these processes take place. <coughs> For example, glycolysis. Glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm. So in case of prokaryote, there is no problem because in prokaryotes, that is in bacteria and all, there is no membrane bound structure so everything is like uniformly distributed all cytoplasmic content is open so in that material glycolysis would take place krebs cycle in case of eukaryotic cell it takes place in the matrix of mitochondria now in prokaryotes there is no mitochondria so Everything that means all the enzymes which are required for Krebs cycle would also take place or would also be present in cytoplasm. So the reaction would take place in cytoplasm. Electron transport chain in case of eukaryotes, uh, it takes place in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now in prokaryote, there is no membrane, but for the transport of electron, those electron acceptors are required. That means those proteins which are acting as the electron acceptors or the ones which are making electron transport chain, these are the proteins which are present in the membrane. So in prokaryotes, there is only one membrane that is plasma membrane. So ETC, electron transport chain takes place in the plasma membrane. Oxidative phosphorylation, it also requires those proteins. So this is also in plasma membrane. So steps are same but the location is different because there is no membrane bound structure, there is no mitochondria. So if there is no mit mitochondria, inner outer membrane matrix, all those things are not there. So all those enzymes which are required, they are present in cytoplasm and the proteins which are required for all these processes, they are present in the membrane. So membrane actually helps in this process. Now, the entire plasma membrane is helping or there is a part of the plasma membrane. So, we normally talk of the infold of plasma membrane which is known as the mesosome. These mesosomes, they have all these proteins which are going to help as the electron acceptors or in oxidative phosphorylation. When we draw the structure of a bacterium, and we say this is the plasma membrane and outside the plasma membrane there is this cell wall. In certain areas we show infolding of plasma membrane. We show such kind of folds. This structure is actually the mesosome. And this is the place where all those proteins are present. So we write plasma membrane because mesosome is nothing but an infold of plasma membrane. But to be very precise, it is the mesosome where this, uh, these electron uh, acceptors would be present and this is the place where ATP would be synthesized. And that is why mesosomes, we say that, that they act as mitochondria 
of eukaryote. In case of eukaryotic cell, mitochondria are called the powerhouse where they synthesize or they help in production of ATP. The same job is done by mesosome. Now coming to anaerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, the first step is same, that means glycolysis. But after that, there are multiple uh, things which are going to be there. So now, here we will divide it into three different uh, steps depending upon which raw material is being broken down. If it is carbohydrate which is broken down, then the process is known as fermentation. In case of fermentation, it is carbohydrate which is anaerobically broken down. So carbohydrate would be broken down to release uh, carbon dioxide plus ethyl alcohol is produced plus energy is generated that is ATP is produced. Such a process is known as fermentation. Condition is that the raw material is carbohydrate. If the raw material is protein, then it is known as putrefaction. And in this process, it is the protein which is being broken down to release energy. And the third process is called the decay. So if other organic or in general organic material is broken down, organic material is broken down to release energy, then that process would be called decay. So now whenever we talk about anaerobic respiration, the only word which comes to our mind is fermentation. But here it is only carbohydrate which is being broken down. If you use the word putrefaction, then it is protein which is broken down and when we use the word decay, it is any organic matter or all organic matters together. If broken down, then that is known as decay. These three processes are anaerobic. So bacteria show aerobic as well as anaerobic type of respiration. Now we will take up few important terms. For example, one is called obligate aerobes. Certain bacteria are obligate aerobes. This means that they can survive only and only in presence of oxygen. They cannot survive in presence of, or in absence of oxygen. So here we write oxygen is must for their survival. They cannot survive if oxygen is not there. So obligate word is normally used when that condition has to be there for their survival. The second term that we are talking about is obligate and error. This means absence of oxygen is a must condition. That means if oxygen is there, then they would not survive. So absence of oxygen is must or they can survive only in anaerobic condition. Oxygen is going to act as a poison for them. Now let us take the third one. Let us talk about facultative aerobes. That means these bacteria can survive in presence of oxygen also. Let us repeat these statements. We will take obligate aerobes and facultative aerobes. For obligate aerobes, we said oxygen is a must. They will survive only in presence of oxygen. For facultative aerobes, we are saying that they can survive in presence of oxygen also. That means they are normally anaerobic. They are anaerobic. But can survive in oxygen also. So obligate word means that condition has to be there. Facultative means that condition is also acceptable. In that condition also they can survive. But normally they are going to be 
anaerobes. So fourth term which we would take up now is going to be facultative anaerobes. That means facultative anaerobes means they can survive in anaerobic condition also. So normally they are aerobic. So if we have to talk about them that they are aerobic but can survive in they are aerobic and can survive in absence of oxygen also facultative and aerobes they are aerobic but can survive in absence of oxygen also so obligate means that condition is a must and facultative means that condition is also okay. They can survive in that. But if we have to sum up their bacteria, they show respiration of both the modes. They show aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. And these four terms are very important because there is a minor difference. Obligate word means condition is a must. Facultative means that condition is also okay. They can survive in that. So this is how. Bacteria re, uh, show respiration. Now in the next part we will talk about the mode of nutrition.